Okay, so differential equations come in different types, and the ones that we're going to look at to a large extent here, we're going to start by looking at first order differential equations. So a differential equation most likely is going to have uh, a derivative here in terms of y, and then apart from that, you can have maybe the rest, uh, maybe some function of x, and maybe some constant. So this is a first order differential equation. You can also have expressions where maybe uh, this is a second order, maybe this is maybe uh, the second derivative. So this can be d2, and then you have dx squared, and then this can be plus. You can even have this, and then you have dx. This can be raised to power 2 plus 5x. Then this is equals to maybe 1, something like that. So this is a differential equation as well. So what makes these differential equations, it's the presence of uh, a derivative term there. So they are equations, of course, because you have an equal sign, but the differential equations because they involve differentials in these expressions. Now, what we want to see is how we solve differential equations. And the first thing that you have to understand is what is the solution to such equations? We are used to ex uh, expressions where you maybe just have 3x plus 4, maybe is equals to 3. The solution to this, of course, is just going to be the value of x. And then, of course, you also have simultaneous equations, maybe where you have x and y. You solve those, the solutions are going to be values of x and y. But for differential equations, the highlight or the star of the whole analysis is the, 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 the variable being differentiated. So the solution to a differential equation is an equation um, where the, the subject of the formula is the term which was being differentiated. So the solution in this case is going to be an equation in terms of y. So that is going to be the solution to such a differential equation. Now, sometimes you can have a, a number of possible solutions and all you want to find is uh, which one, um, just find the easiest way to actually get to the answer. Now, for simplicity, most of the expressions we're going to work out are going to, I think for, for this part, we're going to start by looking at linear differential equations and we're going to look at various methods that are used to work out such equations. Okay, so with that in mind, let's try to first understand what it means for something to actually be a solution to a differential equation. So let's look at So for the first part, we just want to check if expressions that have been given are actually solutions to a differential equation. And in this case, we have a differential equation and you can see here, uh, the differential equation that we've been given is d squared y or the second derivative of y with respect to x. We're multiplying one minus x here. Then we have plus dy dx. And then we have minus y there is equals to zero. Now, in this case, we're really not trying to solve this question. But what the question is asking us to do is they're asking us to show if each of the following, they're saying c1 and c2, they are constants. But they're asking us to show if the, the expressions that have been given there in part one, two, and three, if they are solutions to the differential equation to that differential equation. In the first part, they're saying that, okay, is y is equal to, uh, the that's y is equals to two e to the power x. Is this a solution to the differential equation on top? Remember I did mention to say that the solution to a differential equation is just an expression of the term being differentiated. In this case, the argument of this derivative is y. So solutions to this differential equation are going, it's, are going to be equations um, in terms of y. Let's say y being expressed in terms of x. Here you see that you only have y and then the other variables are, uh, the other variable is just an x. So the solution to this has to be an equation connecting y to x where y is the subject of the formula. And like I mentioned, a differential equation can have multiple solutions. As you can see here, they're saying that, can we show that this is a solution to the differential equation but apparently there's a likelihood that this might also be a solution to that differential equation. And even something that looks like this, for this one, it's actually even more general because C1 and C2 are constants, meaning you can have various forms of that, that equation where C1 and C2 are just being varied. And those two will also be solution. But let's try to prove first that these are actually solutions to the differential equation given here. Now, how do you prove? 
Well, it's actually very straightforward here. All you have to do is obtain what this second derivative of y is and also what this derivative is and plug in what y there is, plug in what these derivatives are. And if this expression will indeed reduce to give us zero, then yes, that expression is a solution. So we will just first, in other words, we're just getting the left-hand side. The right-hand side of that differential equation is a zero. So we want to just see if the left-hand side, when we plug in what y is, will actually reduce to give us zero. If it does reduce to give us zero, then yes, it is a solution. So let's try that. So we have y. Let's get the first derivative of y with respect to x. So if we want to get the first derivative here, you see that this is just going to be 2. The derivative of e to the x is going to remain e to the x. So that is the first derivative. When we get the second derivative here with respect to x, we see again 2 is a constant, so it will, be, it will not be affected. The derivative of e to the x will remain e to the x again. So that is the second derivative again. Once that is done, we can now get our differential equation. So the left-hand side. So what will the left-hand side reduce to give us? So the first part of the left-hand side is the second derivative. So the second derivative is this part here. The first and the second are literally the same thing. But sometimes, or in most cases, they will not be the same. So this is what we have for the second derivative. And the second derivative multiplies 1 minus x. So this will multiply 1 minus x. What do we see? Then we have plus the first derivative multiplying x. And the first derivative is this. So plus the first derivative, which is still 2 e to the x. But this multiplies x. Then what else? We have minus y. Remember what y is. The expression gives us y as 2ex. Then that is equals to 0. So where is y? We're going to put that was minus. Yes, that was minus y. So we have minus 2ex. This is the left-hand side. So let's reduce the left-hand side and see if indeed it will reduce to give us something similar to our right-hand side. So when we expand here, we get 2e to the x minus 2x, then e to the x. I'll just multiply this by 1, then by that expression. Then we have plus. This term here becomes 2x, then e to the x, uh -huh. then the last term, 2e to the x there. So what you see, this is negative here, but this is positive. They are the same term. They'll subtract out. And look at this. This term as well and this term as well, they are the same, but one is positive, one is negative. So clearly, this reduces to zero, which is the same as the right-hand side. So yes, that expression y is equals to 2e to the x is a solution to that differential equation. So this is how we show that something is actually a solution to a differential equation. We can do something similar to the second part, but do we have a question on this one? Okay, it looks like that's fine. We can do the same thing to the second part. After that, I'll ask you guys to try the last one and see if it will actually work. So for that second one, we have y is equals to 3x. That's the one. Yes, y is equals to 3x. For y is equals to 3x, we get the, sec the first derivative with respect to x, we have just 3. Then we get the second derivative with respect to x, we have a 0. We substitute. What are we going to end up having? So I'll just copy that. The second derivative is a 0, so I'm doing this a little bit faster because we've done we went through it. The first derivative here is just a 3. And then y is 3x. So this is just 3x. So this is the left-hand side. Want to see if this will reduce to 0 as well? The first part here is a 0 because we are multiplying. Then this is just 3x minus 3x. See that this also reduces to 0, which is the same as our right-hand side. So yes, y is equals to 3x is also a solution. Now, what you guys can try to do here is try to see if you can approach or use the same technique to show that y is equals to c1 e to the x 
plus C2 e to the x is also a solution to that same differential equation. So try to see if you can use the same approach to work out this. Okay, so that ends the first part. We move on to the next part. So in the next part, we're now going to look at how to actually solve a differential equation using the separation of variables. So let's load up some examples so that we demonstrate how this happens.